Hey guys, welcome back to Gardener's Orchard. My name is Redu. As you guys know, we have a farm here in Brighton, Missouri. We're a specialty fruit grower. But we're gonna do things a little bit different this week. As you can see, we're in our high tunnel here. We have a lot of things going on, but like I said, we are gonna do something different in the sense that we are gonna introduce you to some other local farmers. We're starting a new video series where we're gonna introduce you to the local ag community, to new growers in our community. So stay tuned. Today, we're gonna meet someone really exciting. milking in 2011 in a converted horse barn and that's when the idea started percolating in our brains about maybe building a grade A uh, milking facility sometime and and producing value-added um, uh, products on the farm mm -hmm. And um, the, the concept was that all of the milk that we produced, we would use on the farm. So uh, we bought this property, um, in, which is not very far, as you know, from where we first started across the road, in 2014. And, st and it had no usable buildings on it. It had no... no uh, no fencing for animals. It didn't have, have part of the lane developed. It didn't have a weird working well. It, you know. Anyway, um, and then so we bought it and we started developing it. We bought we built, we built this creamery um, building and we started milking here in the early spring, late winter of 2018. Oh, so it's pretty recent. So it's recent. And we started out, as you know, with one cow, then two cows, and then um, I think maybe the most we milked in the converted horse barn was 15, 17 cows, and then we moved over here, and and, and that wasn't consistent. Now it's like consistently 21, 22, 20 cows. Yeah. Our farm is um, on Highway 13, about halfway between Springfield and Bolivar. It's 11 miles north of I-44 on Highway 13. That, that we looked at early on was in Mount Vernon um, at the extension um, right, center yeah. that they had over there. Um, they were looking at the, uh, the model of the New Zealand farms where they were oh. having cows on pasture the whole time. Now they were just doing, they were doing what a lot of people in this part of the country do, which is seasonal, um, mm -hmm. where they get all of the, uh, the freshening in the spring and they, um, they then take, they, once their cows get through the season, you know, they get rebred at some point in the season and then they're, they're, um, they're dormant in the winter time, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then they start freshening again in the, in the spring. But we freshen most of the year. But we try to do kind of spring and fall calves so that we're not having um, a lot of calves born during the heat. That's not as, much of a problem is having them born during the bitter cold mm -hmm. because we don't have an inside um, uh, calving facility. Okay. Um, we're, we're very low on inside space. So, so at some point in the future we hope to have a calving barn so that we can freshen the ramp.
we grew up on raw milk and we are uh, and we like it. Um, our company is um, owned by two fam two different families. We're not related, um, and um, and the work and the production and everything is shared by the by the two of us. So the farm at this point produces only raw milk. Uh, raw milk is, as most people know, not pasteurized. Um, it's not homogenized. So there's a cream. The cream rises to the top, and you'll see the cream on the on the uh, in the jug. started because he was buying bottle caps mm -hmm. and he was buying from a couple of Jersey farms that were milking and um, the a lady who he was buying from said you need a nurse cow and he said you know basically yeah he'd like that but you know he didn't know that he could do that and so she said I have this cow who'd be perfect for you he managed to get her and he brought her home and he used her for a nurse cow, but he also started milking her. Right. And I grew up drinking raw milk and I said, oh, teach me how to milk a cow. And so um, he did and we went along and, and we're doing that, the, we started giving, he started giving away milk, the neighbors started showing up, people asked if they could buy milk. And uh, when it came time to dry her off, he said, what are we going to do because we're going to have a lot of disappointed people because yeah. we're feeding a lot of people milk. And I said, well, let's buy another cow. So that's how we ended up with the first cow that I bought and that was, um, her name is Sophia. And she's half yeah. milking shorthorn and half Jersey. And she has produced a lot of the, the heifers that we have now, some of oh. whom have grown up into um, her, she and her children, uh, have grown up into being some of our milk cows. I don't know if he shared it with you, but um, he told me the other day, she's the only adult cow that we bought that we have left in the herd. Oh, And yeah. that was back, I guess, in 2011, he told mm -hmm. me. Anyway, so um, she's still with us, and she's bred again, and she'll have another calf this spring. Um, and, but her her calves now, her heifer calves, are having babies, and that's part of the herd as we've grown it. We uh, bought... Uh, cows that were in milk, as the demand re, um, required, we bought adult cows in milk, and then we started buying some uh, heifers when we could find them who were bottle calves, and we also bought some heifers that were weaned calves, and those, some of those cows are still with us and have produced offspring, but that's basically how we've grown our herd, and we haven't bought, we haven't bought a, um, uh, an adult cow in years. Yeah. Uh, we have Jersey cows and so the tendency with Jersey cows is to have a higher percentage of cream in the milk than some of the other breeds that are milked. are on pasture year-round which means that they eat the vast majority of their nutrition comes from the, the uh, grass that they eat. Uh, in the winter time when the grass isn't growing they're fed local hay. Some of it's cut on our property, some of it's cut on our neighbor's property. Um, it's generally a mixture of grass and a legume of some kind, usually clover, sometimes lespedeza, occasionally alfalfa. Um, in, the, in the milking parlor itself, the cows are given a, a ration of uh, a, a milking formula that Shane devised, uh, which is grain-based. Um, we try to not put things in it that we think make the milk taste bad, um, uh, because we're very proud of the taste and the quality of the taste of the milk that we produce. Um, 
in the uh, but but we do that in order to keep the cows fit to keep them from losing too much weight as they're producing milk because many milk cows will um, have body wasting uh, if they if they aren't fed a balanced diet. Um, our hopes for the future are that there's another phase to this whole project, okay. and that is our pasteurized product. Got it. Uh, in order to um, to do any other uh, um, milk produ production products, any value-added products for the farm, um, we have to pasteurize uh, in order to be licensed right. to sell those things legally. So. Um, hopefully in the future we'll have butter and chocolate milk. Yes, mm. the good stuff. The good stuff. <laughs> <laughs>